JD here, and today we've got this beast. This is the Bayang Toys X21. It is a, a large scale photography drone. Now, this quadcopter has GPS, it has four brushless motors with extremely tough propellers. It has a 1080p camera on the underside of it, which is powered off the main battery of the, of, of the quadcopter. It has two heavy duty landing sprigs. The body is quite aggressive, giving it that dip at the front to ensure it cuts through the, cuts through the air without any issue. The camera also has a small gimbal, which enables it to reduce jello on video that it records. And this is it. It is massive. Uh, <laughs> so what we're going to do today, we're going to put her on the mat, we're going to calibrate her, we're going to send her up, we're going to see what this camera is like. We're going to hopefully take her around the field a little bit and see exactly what video we can get from this guy. Now as this guy fell from the sky because one of these nuts was lost um, last week, I have been going over it and ensuring that everything is ready, all the pre-flight checks of this particular quadcopter actually make out and everything is okay. The only thing I don't know is whether that camera works. So let's take her up and let's have a little look and see what we've got. Okay so let's plug this up and then let's turn it on, let's get it calibrated. Now the back end here is a bit of a mess when it comes to all the wires. So let's get all the plugs out first and then let's remove this there we are, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure the battery could freely move just so I could plug it up without there being any issue. Oh, let's turn this round. Come on, in you go. Beautiful. And now, from what I said in the unboxing, there's an on and off switch on the side that if we don't move, it's gonna, con if we don't turn on, it's gonna continually make this beeping sound. So, that's it, we're on. Now we have all these lights, let's turn on the transmitter, transmitter is bound. Now let's calibrate this until all of these LEDs are nice and solid. So the simplest way to do that is, and then once we've moved it this way, then let's move it this way three times until, oh, there we go, lovely. All LEDs are now nice and solid. So now with that, we should, let's have a little look and see whether we are connected on our phone. Yeah, we are automatically connected, beautiful. And then let's open up the application. Now, are we gonna get any video because it came down with a bit of a bang? I don't think so. That doesn't look as if we've got anything. We have just got a blank screen from the camera. Yeah, it looks like the camera is there. My finger, when I put my finger over the lens, you can see it does get very dark, very quick. But that shows me that the camera itself is actually broken from the fall. So as we're waiting for enough satellites, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fashion myself a little camera on the front of it. So I'm going to put this, attach this on as best I can. And then what I'll do before I actually do any proper flying with it, I'll remove this camera. But I just want to get a little bit of up off the air action there. Right, okay, so here we go. So we have the run cam on. Let's get recording. I'm going to record as anyway in case it's just the FPV which is screwed. So I'm going to record video from here if I can. No, it's not even letting me record. No, there we are. Okay, it's not letting me do anything from there at all. So today is going to be a line of sight view, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do is move everything back a bit because these motors are extremely powerful. Then we're going to unlock the motors and then we're going to stand back. Uh, right, so I don't really trust this guy, if I'm honest, uh, because of what happened with the propellers last week. So what I'm going to do for the second is just to ensure that we have a nice stable flight, I'm just going to take her around at about 10 foot 
and see what happens to those propellers. So far, it looks okay. I mean, that run cam isn't going to do anything. This bird has got more than enough power within those brushless motors. It isn't going to, going to alter how this thing flies. It isn't going to alter anything at all about this particular quadcopter. Hence why I've put it on the, uh, on the landing sprig, just because I know out of all of the quadcopters that I've flown, this guy is going to be able to be able to put up with it. So. So far, looks okay. We've raised him a little bit. Now let's move him in anger. Ooh, it's a little bit of a wobble, but he is pulling one side. Okay, we'll get a little bit more footage with this and then we will get that camera off him. But so far, his flight is extremely stable, extremely easy to control very very minimal movements give him a really nice smooth angle of attack so far this actually seems really nice now we're going to bring him in a little bit closer in a minute or two i just want to see exactly what he's like when he turns um, and what he's like with a little bit of altitude we're taking on a couple of really close turns And he seems to be doing quite well, you know. He seems to be okay. And I think, right, yeah. Okay. Let's bring him down. Actually, before I do, let's have a little look at his stability with that camera on his landing spring. So with the camera on his landing sprig, he's okay. He's got a bit of movement there. It's very, I find it very difficult to actually calibrate a quadcopter until there's no movement. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear the landing area and I'm gonna bring him down. Right, this is a little bit of a midway test just because I want to see what is going on with these propeller nuts. And I wanna see exactly how tight these are have these moved at all? No. 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 Okay, perfect. They are still extremely, extremely on there. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand out of the way again. Let's start these motors. Everything looks to be good. Let's take her up. <laughs> Now that was a little bit of a accelerated start and all I did was I had the throttle open three quarters of the way to give it a little bit of lift and that is what we got out of it was an extremely animated start. Okay so yeah so far I'm liking this guy I think this guy is okay. Now what I think he's a little bit too big, I think he's a little bit too heavy and I think that what's making me say this is the fact that his movements, although they seem to be very very good and he seems to be moving very very well, his movements, if you move him suddenly, like if I turn him around and bring him down, see that wobble? He just wobbles a lot. He does seem very wobbly. Now whereas I don't think from this little flight that he is unstable and dangerous. I wouldn't have said that at all. What I do think is that, what I do think is that it's noticeable. Because this is a big photography bird, it is noticeable when you, when you look at the other drones this is trying to imitate, like the Phantoms. And you think to yourself, well, maybe this is actually a little bit too wobbly to be compared to those. So as we've got him up at a bit of height, let's give him a little bit more speed. 
and let's see exactly how he does with that. And he seems to be coping extremely well. I've got him now at full pitch and he seems to be all right. But obviously we want to have a little look and see how that stability looks with the camera. Now, this is gonna be a little bit weird because the camera, as you can see, is not outputting anything after the crash. So unfortunately, we're not gonna get anything from there. But what I can do, hopefully that this run cam isn't going to pick up too much jello on its, uh, on, its, uh, on its landing sprig either. And hopefully we'll be able to have a good little view of that and see exactly how this, this particular drone is coping with that camera. So that gives us a long enough time to have a little look and see with this run cam how it, how it is actually coping. So let's bring him back a little bit. I'm gonna reverse him to me. I'm gonna st stand clear of the area. God, these flies, where are these coming from? And now because of these propellers and because of these motors, we're gonna need a bit of an area. This is why I've chosen this particular area to fly from, to land him. So if I land him, there we are, that looks as good as any. Bring him down and then keep your hand all the way down on the throttle and then the motors then after a couple of seconds will totally turn themselves off and then you are able to walk back and pick him up. Right then, okay, so we've had a little luck. We've got a little bit of video on here, which is exactly what I wanted. Thank you, Runcam, for being a fantastic source of, ah, an actual stable source. You know what, these cameras, I know this isn't a Runcam review, but these cameras, the amount of time this has saved my beacon when a camera hasn't worked, it really is worth getting. It really is worth getting. Okay. So now what we have is we have the standard camera attached. We're not gonna get anything from there. This we know. So what I'm gonna do is start the motors again, stand back, all four motors are turning, so we're all good. And then with that, give it a bit of throttle. Now that was a quarter throttle from 50%. So you're probably looking maybe at about 65% throttle there. And it just take, it takes off. And it seems as if, when it takes off, it seems as if it's on springs. It'll go from being directly level on the floor to being up in the air just by a little increase of that throttle, a couple of percentage increase, and then it'll just fly off. Right, okay, so I don't know how well this is going to work, but let's try and see if we've got the follow me function. I want to try and see if I can use it. I don't know if it relies on the particular camera to just hone in on where you are. But what I'm going to do is bring him down a little bit in case this doesn't work just so that I can safely bring him down if anything goes wrong. If I hit the follow button, if I move, obviously he's not going to see me because there's nothing on. Oh, no, he seems to be doing something, but he also seems to be, he is moving a hell of a lot. So if I just put this to the test, if I come over here, what's going to happen to you, buddy? Are you going to... Oh, it is, it is honing, in my, honing in on my location. It is moving, but it's also whirlpooling quite a bit as well. Okay, so that's follow me. It does work. If I come over here, maybe you can see it work a little bit better. It's not very stable, <laughs> but it doesn't make me want to grab the controls and think, oh my God, this is very unstable. It just, as you can see, it just isn't very stable. I mean, if I'm, let's try and see if we can get some tripod action on here so I can hone in on the particular area of this drone and we can see properly what's going on. So this is with follow me. So if I move, let's have a little look and see. Yeah, see he is, he's very flighty. He's honing in on the transmitter, I think and he's very flighty, he's, it's taken him a couple of seconds to realise where I am. But he's not just moving left to right, he's, he's, bringing, himself full, he's bringing himself around as well, using the, um, using your. So that is quite good, so he, he might be looking at me through the camera. I don't know how, because I get absolutely no picture whatsoever. Right, okay, let's turn off follow. Now I've got full control back again. This is in speed mode too. Full angle of attack, ah, and there's the battery. Okay, well, thoughts on this guy, folks. Well, I'll be honest with you. He seems, doesn't seem that stable when he is, when he is moving. He doesn't seem to be very well balanced at all when he's moving, but he is. 
bringing himself home in the most dangerous manner I think I've ever seen. Right, tripod, come here. What's he doing? I just had no control over his movements at all then. Okay, I'm gonna land this guy. Let's bring him down. Let's give him a bit of a, a wide area where there isn't anything. And let's bring him down. Well, wow. Um, okay. Well, no, normally on all the landings I've done with this, he comes down, then you turn him off. Maybe it's a low battery thing that he came down and then didn't turn himself off. I'm not entirely sure, but let's knock off the transmitter. Let's knock off this guy as well. Right, okay. So, what are the thoughts on that? Well, he doesn't seem to be very, very stable at all. Uh, he does seem to be missing the extra stability that you get from a lot of GPS drones. Now, movement-wise, he was... I'm trying to find a good way to hold this guy. Movement-wise, he was okay. He, his movements relayed very well from the transmitter. I didn't once have to move him twice to get him to move. You're fine, roll, pitch, no problem at all. Um, now, where I did ha lose a little bit of confidence was right at the end. I don't know if it was trying to send itself home. It took itself up, it moved itself over to me really aggressively and then hovered above me. And I thought, right, okay, that's a little bit weird. I thought I cleared the area of the tripod because I thought, a lot like the, the e sheen that we looked at with the double GPS a, a couple of months ago, it was just going to bring itself back down and land. Obviously, that wasn't the case. But I had thought to myself, wow, this guy is going to come down. He's going to come down hard. So uh, that's why I jumped in and moved, tried to move everything out of the way. As a photography drone, Honestly, I would. I, I can't. I can't talk about the camera. This really annoys me. I would. Re, I would love nothing more than to just turn around and be like, "Camera is excellent. This is excellent. What a fantastic, um, a fantastic bird." But at the end of the day, I want to be as honest and as transparent as possible. Couldn't use the camera because of when one of these uh, locking nuts came off the first time I flew it, and the camera bounced across the floor from a ten-foot height. So that ten-foot height, when it came down, just absolutely killed the camera. Um, I did put my run cam on there. Obviously, I'm going to label up the run cam footage as run cam footage. I had intended to take him right out onto the second bit of trees in the clearing, but unfortunately, I didn't have enough confidence in this guy in order to do it. And the reason I didn't have the confidence was because when I first took him up and took him around, he seemed okay, but if you could tell by my voice, I wasn't 100% committed just because when I moved him, he just he seemed a little bit... He didn't move and then slowly bring himself back. Even if he brings himself back, allowing his air brakes to stabilise him and then move again and then allowing himself to be stabilised. He was moving himself and then when he was stopping, he was doing this. So I don't have full confidence in, an, in, in a drone that does that. What I am going to do is charge this battery back up and we're going to take him back up next week and see whether that has in a, in a different weather type we have got about a six mile an hour wind coming in from the left working its way directly to the right on those trees so maybe in a different environment with a, with a lot less wind maybe it'll be a bit different but to be honest through six mile an hour wind that would be pretty much anywhere that you fly you're going to get at least four to six mile an hour wind it's what i mostly get on this particular area anyway right okay that being said if you guys have had a, a, a better experience with this guy, let me know. If there's things that you think that I could have done better when it comes to the calibration or when it comes to the actual, um, or when it comes to this drone, then let me know. So, because at the end of the day, I, this has been recommended to me by Telephony. Thank you, buddy, for doing that. And obviously, I want to have as much of a good experience as he had flying his. I have seen a couple of videos since having this uh, and seeing that a couple of people did have the same stability issues that I've had. Maybe it's to do with this drone. Maybe it's to do with my calibration. Whatever happens, we're going to take him up again and have a little look at his flight in a bit more detail and see whether or not it was down to me in a totally different uh, environmental setting. All right, then, folks. Thank you ever so much for watching listening i've been jd you've been fantastic as always if you haven't already please like and subscribe hello and welcome to all the new subscribers i hope you're enjoying the channel so until next time my friends happy flying